good morning or good afternoon, whatever applies to wherever you are. Thank you for joining me on my podcast, Unwind and Knit With Me. This is episode four, and I would like to welcome back um, anybody who has been following me since episode one, but also welcome to any new viewers. Uh, it's been really exciting. Thank you to everyone who has subscribed. As of yesterday, in the first four weeks, we've got 150 subscribers, so that's really exciting. Um, but please, if you are watching, um, just remember to hit the subscribe button. Um, thank you very much. And you can also follow me on Instagram and Ravelry, and I'm Lisa NZ Knitter, and I'll put that down below in the show notes. So everything I talk about today or show you, I will put links to all of it in the show below, sorry, in the show notes below. So if you just click the read more button, it should pop down, scroll down and it'll have um, all the links there to everything that I talk about. Um, so I have got a lot to show you. Um, I hope you have a cup of tea or coffee and I hope you have your knitting handy. And if you don't, maybe you want to click pause and run off and make a cup of tea and come back because this might go on for a little while today. Um, so I am excited to bring you lots of new things and some finished objects. Um, so yeah, we'll get on with that. First of all, um, what I'm wearing um, is, I've got it here. Um, it's called Coquill by Marie Green um, from Olive Knits. There's the pattern there. That is available on Ravelry and it's a paid for pattern. And I knitted this a couple of years ago out of Kiwiana, the high twist merino in the color dark denim. I have talked to you about this yarn before. It's one of my favorites. Um, it's easy to wear. It's got great uh, stitch definition. It doesn't peel or fluff, um, washes well. Um, so I always have some of this in my stash. So I do recommend, um, yeah, it's recommend, I recommend it. So give it a try if you're after a, a new yarn. I've put the link to that yarn in my show notes below. Um, but that's what I'm wearing. And shortly I'll show you a short video with what I'm wearing and, and also um, wearing my finished objects. So I'll insert those photographs for you um, further on through this podcast. Okay, so what I have finished is my Kuta tea. Now my Kuta tea is by Sari Nordland. That's it there. That's a paid for pattern on Ravelry. Um, that also comes in a long sleeve version. Um, I, I highly recommend this. It is uh, something I would knit again. Um, I've enjoyed knitting it. I've enjoyed the lace work on it. Um, I, I did it in a 50% merino, 50% cotton in a weight that wasn't recommended. So I did have to adjust my needle size and my gauge slightly. But I'm really thrilled with the finished project, which I'll show you. I will, like I said, I'll show it to you. Um, I'll show you a picture of it with me wearing it. So really thrilled with that. Love the lace work on it. The front and the back are identical. There's no short rows on the back. So what I have done is I've placed a wee tag there so I know which is the back. So when I blocked it, I blocked it quite aggressively to stretch the back and the front um, to give me that neckline. Um, so yeah, that's it. And the only other modic modification I made is in the pattern. It's a, I think a two and a half centimeter band and I've actually put an eight centimetre band on that in a twisted rib. Um, so I, yeah, I do like my tops to sort of sit with a with a, a thicker a, a waistband. They just tend to sit a bit nicer. So that's the only modification I did with that. I, I do highly recommend it for a summer tea. Um, and yeah, we'll show you the photo of that one shortly. The other project I've been working on, and it's, seems like a really big mission because I got over halfway and pulled it back out again and if you've been following me since episode one you'd know all about this drama that I had but that's Miss Arena Miss Arena by Caitlin Hunter another summer tea um, 
yeah so anybody that's watching for the first time I knitted this over halfway um, I didn't like the gauge I didn't do a swatch so I ripped it all back and I started again um, and I went up half a needle size and I'm just thrilled with it I haven't quite got it finished I really wanted it finished I could have pulled an all-nighter last night and got it finished but then I wouldn't have been um, in good form today so I've finished it all by the band so here's a wee, a wee look at it finished I am going to do uh, the pattern calls for a two and a half centimetre band again but I am going to do an eight centimetre band um, like I did with my kutati because that's what I like but I will even though this is not quite finished I will model it for you and show you what it's like because um, I have had a few people say, I can't wait to see it finished. Um, I'm so close to finishing it, but I will show it to you um, a bit further on down the podcast. Um, I did make another alter, uh, modification and I actually added about another four, maybe four centimetres to the sleeve length. So the sleeve length was um, quite small, but I like a bit of a longer sleeve. Um, so I did, yeah, I did a wee bit extra um, to the length of that sleeve. Now, where's my notes? I used, once again, I used the Kiwiana 4-ply Merino for this, um, for this garment. And I got on the website this morning um, and she has a very similar colourway. Um, and it's called Summer Love. And I have put a link to this pattern but I've also put a link to that yarn so if you do like the color that I've done and you think you'd like to give it a go um, I'll put the link to that yarn I, and I do highly recommend it yeah it's um, yeah I'll do that pattern again actually it's it was quite easy but I also think it's a nice one that you could do the contrast color with there's so many different options and you could take that yarn from your stash um, it doesn't take a lot and actually the whole garment the main color was less than two skeins um, the skeins were 400 meters each and I've got quite a bit left over and I've still got the band to go but I will have quite a bit left over so two, two 400 meter skeins and a contrast color from your stash um, will get that top done so yeah all the links below okay let's get myself a wee drink okay in my last podcast i'm pretty sure it was my last one i talked about wanting to dye some yarn using your avocado pips and avocado uh, skins and i did a wee bit of research on youtube and i thought that's really easy <laughs> i can do this um, so I just wanted to give you a wee update what I did there. So over a period of time I'd been saving all my pips and my skins and cleaning them, removing any flesh from the skins and freezing them in a plastic bag. One important thing to remember if you're going to do this, before you freeze the pips, cut them into at least quarters because once they're frozen you can't cut them up. Um, so cut them up wash your skins and you can freeze them when i thought i had enough i probably had about a dozen maybe 14 i took them out of the freezer and i put them in my slow cooker my crock pot and and i brewed them with just water a couple of i, th I filled it so it might have been about four liters of water and i brewed it for about 10 hours um, in my slow cooker and then I drained it using a bit of muslin cloth, like calico kind of cloth. I drained it all and I separated the water between two big soup saucepans and topped it up with water. And what I had were these naked skeins, these here. Now I'll tell you what that is and where I got it from, but I wanted to do four skeins. so. I did two in each saucepan. So what 
the recommendation is, is that you soak your skeins in plain cold water for a couple of hours before you put it in the dye pot. So I had done that. I'd had them in cold water um, for quite some hours. I wrung the cold water out and I put two skeins each into each saucepan and I let it simmer for about an hour on a very low heat without moving it around too much because that can cause a, the felting effect. So, um, yeah, you've really got to keep an eye on it because it has to be just a really, really soft simmer without too much movement. And then I rinsed it all out. And this is, what have I got? Mm. Here it is, sorry. This is what I produced was this beautiful, look at that. It's, I don't even know how to describe it. It's a really pale, earthy pink. The word that comes to mind, and I don't know why, but it's almost like a mushroom pink. And I just love it. I was so, so thrilled with how it worked out and how easy it was. So I didn't use any vinegar, any mordants, um, that set the colour or I didn't use anything I just used water and avocado and what I learnt is that there's a, a tannin a chemical that actually comes out of the avocado pip and that works as um, your fixer or your generally you have to do this alkaline acid thing with vinegar you don't have to do any of that just water and avocado and that's all I did and I, I am thrilled I'm super thrilled so what I've done is I've got a mohair in a very close colour and I'm going to knit up, um, it's called the No Frill Sweater by Petite Knits, that's it there. And it's just a really nice um, stockinette stitch jersey, but it's the sleeves are quite, they're, uh, they're a little bit ballooned, I think that's the word, it's got fluffy sleeves. Um, now I did do a swatch and I'm really thrilled with it that's it there I got gauge um, love the color love the feel um, and I'm going to knit that no frill sweater by petite knits now let me just check my notes that is a paid for pattern um, on Ravelry I will put the notes below but what I wanted to tell you about was these naked skeins um, I know that you can get them from skeins in Napier, but I bought mine from Wild Earth Yarns. Once again, the link will be below. And you can buy these, there's 400 metres in there of the four ply for $12, or you can buy a bag of 10 for $95, um, which I think is really reasonable. And they have Merino, they have a Polworth Pol Alpaca, a merino nylon and a, and a merino high twist and they have all of those available in four ply and eight ply so if you're if you're brave or you're keen and you want to try a bit of dyeing I'll leave you the link so you know where to get your naked skeins from and try the avocados it's, it's really good as um, I actually approached one of my local cafes that I go to and I've asked them to save they go through quite a lot of avocados in this cafe and I've asked them to save their pips and their skins for me um, because I've got another six skeins of this and I'm, I'm going to try it again. I am going to try to make a more concentrated brew if I can get more skins and I'm hoping that will give me a little bit of a darker colour. But the colour is, it's beautiful, it's, it's a neutral but it's soft, it's... And it's quite a feminine colour. Um, yeah, I'm really thrilled. So that, that's been my, I don't know, wee bit of an experiment. It's something that I've always wanted to try to do. Um, I was a little bit nervous about doing it. But then when I realised that I didn't need any chemicals or I didn't have to worry about acids and alkalines and, and all I needed was water and my stove, easy peasy. So... Um, yeah, I hope to cast that on in the next couple of days. Um, it'll be quite an easy knit because it's just stock in it stitch. But I will, um, yeah, I'll keep you up to date on my progress with that. And I will also keep you up to date if I manage to get a big bucket of skins and pips from the local cafe. 
yeah I'll do a concentrated brew and I'll let you know how I go with that um, and once again the link to it's called Wild Earth Yarns um, they're a mill here in Christchurch uh, and that's where you can get your all of your naked skeins from um, if you're keen to do that little project okay the next thing that I haven't cast on but I have swatched for I'm swatching now I'm not knitting anything without a swatch I've had to pull too many projects back um, so yep swatching so this is called Night Blooms. It's by Espace Tricot. Espace Tricot. I can't say that with a French accent. I wish I could. Um, actually, how about I take it out of the plastic? That would help. Now I talked about this in my last podcast. Night Blooms sweater. There it is there. Okay, so that's done in a DK or an eight ply. It's quite a boxy, loose-fitting um, jersey with lots of negative ease. And the colour work in the pattern, I think in my last podcast I was going to use a black that I had in my stash. But in the pattern it calls for black mohair double-stranded. So I had some black mohair, double, um, uh, black mo mohair so I thought I would double-strand it and I would do my swatch as the pattern called for. Now... The main colour I was using is um, is an undyed yarn eight ply that I have, and I've done the swatch using the mohair, and I'm not quite sure. <laughs> so I'll give you a close look, and what you can see is ha happened there. Is the mohair? It almost looks like it's bleeding. It's it's fluffed a bit. And I'm not sure if I can live with that. <laughs> it's sometimes I look at it and I love it and I think that's how it's supposed to be. There's supposed to be the fluff and the halo of the mohair and that's part of the design feature. And sometimes I look at it and I think, oh, I don't like it. <laughs> so I'm, I'm actually just going to sit with this and I'm going to leave it laying around on my desk and in my net bag. And I'm going to pick it up and I'm going to keep, keep looking at it until I decide whether I love it or not. Because like I said, sometimes I do really love it and sometimes I'm not quite sure. Um, yeah, let me know your thoughts on that. If anyone has knitted it, I'd like to know if that the black sort of tends to bleed or, or whether I'm just being a little bit too fussy. But um, other than that, I got gauge. So I have got the wool there. So watch this space. I may cast it on or I may not. Um, I, I need to think about that one a bit more. Now this pattern, Night Blooms Sweater by Space Trico, I've put the link below. It's actually a free pattern. Um, so it's always nice when you can get a free pattern. And it's even nicer if you've already got the yarn um, that's required if you've got it in your stash. So yeah, have a look for that um, or check the link out in Ravelry free pattern and yeah I've looked at some of the projects that have been done and it is a really nice sweater so no doubt I will cast it on at some stage I just have to decide whether I love it with the mohair or not yeah the more I look at it the more I am liking it maybe I should just feel the fear and feel the fear and do it anyway <laughs> that's what they say um, the next pattern that I am looking at, sorry, bear with me. Um, now, once again, this is another pattern by Space Tricol. I hope I'm saying that right, by Space Tricol. Um, and it's another free pattern. And I don't know how to pronounce it other than I will say Musso. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not at all sure how to pronounce that. Um, and once again, it's just a stockinette um, jersey. They call for mohair double-stranded. And this one's meant to be a really light, airy, almost a summer or a spring type jersey. Um, it wouldn't be warm. It wouldn't be a warm jersey at all. It's a little bit, you can see it's a little bit boxy with um, some puffy sleeves. That's it there. Worth checking out because it's a free pattern. 
Now, I'll tell you about the yarn. So the yarn, I have started my swatch and I'm just going to show you that. See how it's really airy? It's really seriously a loose gauge. The yarn that I'm using, um, Skeins here in Napier had a big sale recently and they had this three ply. Let me make sure I've got this right. Um, it's a lace weight, three ply lace weight alpaca and it's super fine. And what drew me to it was actually the colour. Um, I don't have anything in this sort of brown. It's quite a neutral sort of brown. But I've got a pair of boots in this colour and I've always wanted to do a jersey that will match my boots. Um, so I bought 1200 metres, three skeins of this on special. And then I was able to get this mohair to double strand with it. You can see that there. Seriously nice sort of earthy tone. Um, now this mohair um, I want to talk about as well. So it's 67% mohair, 5% wool and 28% nylon. Now one ball, 40 grams, gives you 400 metres for $25. Now I, find that, I found that really cheap because a lot of mohair that I've been buying is generally only around the 200 metres and is close to $20. So for Economically, I think this is a really nice mohair. Um, now, this comes from Perfectly Imperfect Twists. Once again, I'll put the show notes. So, she doesn't have an online store, but you can buy it through... You, you go through Facebook, and through Facebook, you message her, and, you can, and then can buy it through her. Her communication is awesome. Like she's onto it within minutes and, and um, the correspondence is really good. It's really clear. She'll show you any photos that you want to see of the different colour range. You can suggest to her what you're doing and she will um, have a recommendation for you. Really lovely to deal with. Um, she got it in the post the same day um, and, and I can't fault it, but, um, if mohair is quite popular at the moment, some people love it, some people hate it, um, but if you are doing a bit of double-stranded work with mohair, I would check, um, I'm sorry, I can't remember her name, but it's Perfectly Imperfect Twists is where you'll find her on Facebook, um, and once again, $25 for 400 metres. So what I've done is I've double-stranded these two, and I'm doing my swatch, and I'm pretty sure it'll be in gauge, but like I said to really light, airy, it'll be a really light, airy summer type type of garment. Um, yeah, Stress, but I will, like I said, I'll put the link below. So that's another project that I'm kind of started, but haven't started, I've swatched for. That's a start, isn't it? <laughs> um, Oh my God, I have so many, so many just um, projects that I want to knit and I, I just haven't got enough time. There's just so much I want to do. And after dyeing that yarn, like seriously, I want to do some more, um, I want to do some more dyeing just for myself. It, it was really fun and it was really rewarding. Excuse me. It's coffee I'm drinking, by the way. A long black. <laughs> I'm a black coffee drinker. Um, yes, yeah, so what next? I did talk to you last time also about Love Note. Um, it's a really popular pattern. It's been around a long time. And I was gifted some black mohair yarn. Um, and I start, made a start. And I didn't swatch. <laughs> um, when I swatch, I get it right. When I don't swatch, it always comes back to bite me and I get it wrong. So I have cast on, you can see that there, in this black mohair. And I've just got to the point where I'm ready to start increasing and doing the lace work. And I thought, I don't think the lace work's going to show up. Um, so the tag on this yarn that I got isn't in, it's not in English. So I did a bit of a Google search and I found someone that was selling it and it had a, a description. And it did actually recommend to use a needle size five to six. 
and I'm using a four and a half. And now I can see why I don't think the lace work will show up. So I am going to pull this back and I'm going to start again using a five and a half needle size. Um, and I think that'll be perfect. I'm not sure how this yarn is going to um, unwind. So I, ho I hope I haven't wasted it. Um, but I am keen to do this black love note and I'm pretty sure that I will make some good progress on that before I see you next. It's probably the project I will start working on as soon as I finish my Miss Arena. Um, but I do have to unpull it again. <laughs> another another um, work in progress that I need to unwind. It's just starting to become a bit of a habit. Um, wanted to give you a wee tip. Um, which I try to do um, in most episodes and it's really just my thoughts and my opinions let me see where it is here it is there so um, we often talk we often talk about blocking um, our garments but also washing them so a lot of my woolen garments I only wash once a year maybe in spring or summer I'll pull half a dozen out and I'll give them a wash Unless I spill something on them or they, they get quite dirty. Um, I generally just give them, give them a freshen up once a year. And that's the beauty of wool, right? It breathes, it breathes and it doesn't trap dirt or odour. Um, but what I use is this product called Eucalyn. I think that's how you pronounce it, but I'll show it to you there. And it's a wool wash. It's a lanolin enriched concentrate. Now this, I only bought this a couple of weeks ago. The first bottle that I bought, I know when I bought it, and it, last, it lasted me just over three years. So this is not the cheapest wool wash. It's actually around $27 a bottle. But like I said, mine lasted me three years. It's super concentrated. I would never use more than you know, the size of a coin in your hand. Um, actually, the cap's really small and you would never use more than a cap. Um, so it's seriously concentrated. You don't need much of it. It's lanolin enriched, which is what your wool likes, and you don't have to rinse it out. So there's not a lot of movement happening. Um, you just give it a wash, give it a rest, let it soak, um, tip the water out and towel dry it. You do not have to wash this out. It's not super sudsy um, and it's designed to stay um, in, in the garment, not, not be rinsed out. And the reason I wanted to mention this because I saw a podcast recently and they were talking about blocking garments and some people were saying that they use shampoo or conditioner. Um, some people just use water. Some people use the commercial wool wash that, that you can buy in the supermarket. But I heard somebody say that they actually use dishwashing liquid, dishwashing liquid. And I just cringed. I thought, no, don't ever use dishwashing liquid. Um, dishwashing liquid is designed to strip out. It's designed to strip grease and eat through oil and grease. And that's not what you want to do with your woolens. You don't want to stress. You don't want to strip out those natural oils. I would also even be careful of using shampoo because I think shampoo is also designed to clean um, and it may strip out some of the colour or the oils. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to touch on that. I have put a link below. Um, I live in the South Island of um, the South Island in New Zealand and I buy this from, it's called Vintage Pearls and they're based in Dunedin and I think that's the closest for me. If you're in the North Island, if you're around Auckland, there's probably someone more local to you where you can buy it. But I will put the link below. I do recommend it. It's not the cheapest wool wash, but it, it lasts a long time. Like I said, over three years, I had my first bottle. There are a few, diff a few different fragrances and none of them are overpowering or uh, they're just nice and subtle. Um, and it, yeah, it's worth it's worth it, right? Because you have to look after your woolens, um, the time and the money that goes into them. Um, yeah, it's not worth stripping out any colour or stripping out any natural oils. 
Okay, I am going to quickly show you some photos of my finished um, objects, which is my Kuta tea, my Miss Arena, which is finished all by the band, so it's not quite finished, and also the top that I'm wearing now. Um, yeah, so I hope you enjoy seeing these photos. Okay, um, I have got some new patterns to show you that um, that I've come across. Some of them I have purchased the yarn for, um, some I haven't yet, but I wanted to share the patterns with you. Um, I am really keen to do some more um, colour work. Um, I seem to be a bit opposite with the seasons, so through winter I seem to have knitted quite a few summer teas. Um, which I've shown you, which is great because I can start wearing them because we're coming into our spring and summer. But now I've got an urge to cast on some winter um, projects, which is going to be in the middle of our summer. <laughs> so at least I'll have some new winter things to wear next season. But I have come across some really nice patterns, um, both um, most of them with colour work, but um, some that can be done as short sleeve or long sleeve. Now I come across this. Um, and once again, I'm not sure about the pronunciation, but it's called, I think it's called May, Maya, Maya, um, sit here. It can be done as a long sleeve or a short sleeve. And it's got quite a bit of color work there. Actually, the whole garment contains color work, right? <laughs> um, I'll leave the link there. Now, what caught my eye about this pattern was the yarn that, that this original pattern was done in um, is actually Happy Go Nitty, which if you're a New Zealander, you will have probably have heard of Helene at Happy Go Nitty. So she's um, Auckland-based indie dyer. She does some beautiful yarn. I have shown you before, um, this is one of her yarns. The base is, it's called Mardi, and the base is yak silk and merino but it's it's got a high twist it's got shine it's got drape it's a beautiful yarn so this pattern here actually calls for the mardi um the mardi um base brought out by happy go nitty um i did reach out to helene at happy go nitty to ask her if she sold kits now, she hasn't got kits listed on her website, but she's more than happy to make you up a kit. So she could make you up a kit using these original colours, or you could select your own colours. Um, you can correspond with her through her contacts on her website. Um, but yeah, I think that, that drew me to this pattern is that, it, it's, is that we can actually use the yarn that's recommended. Quite often I come across patterns and we have to yarn substitute um, if, I, if I want to buy locally because a lot of the patterns just aren't done in what we have here um, in New Zealand. So this is, yeah, I'll just show you again. And the yarn is Happy Go Nitty. So if you're keen to do that, that pattern in long sleeve or short sleeve, like I said, reach out to Helene and she will be able to make up a kit for you. Um, and that makes it so much easier, doesn't it? When you get all the right wool in the right quantities. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I haven't got the wool for that, but uh, it is a pattern that's on my list. The other pattern I come across, um, and don't be surprised, it's another Caitlin Hunter. I love Caitlin Hunter's work. Um, and this is, once again, don't be surprised, it's a summer tea. <laughs> um, this picture is actually in the cropped version but you can do a standard length um, really earthy it's only two shades it's sort of a, a dark brown and a and a cream beige color it's a super wash let me get you the details um, yeah so it's a sport weight super wash it's lace work the whole garments lace work and it's top down um, yeah, and I, 
it, it appealed to me and I think it was because there's a lot of lace work in it and that is showing up there on the camera yeah so that one's called Cavat by Caitlin Hunter and I don't have any yarn in mind for that I haven't purchased any yarn but um, I wanted to share the pattern with you it's always nice to see new patterns um, and and the link is on the notes below now I've just got piles all around me if I had to get up quickly I'd be in trouble <laughs> okay now this next pattern like I said I I'm really quite keen to do some color work some stranded color work this pattern is called merely and it's brought out by knitting for breakfast now I follow her on Instagram and that's where I saw this pattern on Instagram so I jumped over to Ravelry and found the pattern and purchased it once again <laughs> surprise surprise it's a short sleeve but it can be done as a long sleeve now there's a lot of color work in there but it is only four colors okay so that's it there merely now I've done a lot of color work and I tend to always use super wash yarns and that's like I think this is I'm not an expert but this is a super wash yarn so it's yarn that's generally gone through a lot of treatments um, it's shiny it's smooth it's drapey um, and it's beautiful but a lot of traditional color work calls for non super wash yarn um, a lot of Shetland if you see patterns that have Shetland yarn or uh, Shetland yeah Shetland pat patterns the yarn is more rustic it's more um, it's a grippier yarn it's a toothier yarn and I've got some to show you it's it's yarn that I love but I always I always related non super wash yarn to maybe being a bit scratchy not soft to the skin and I've used some non super wash yarn where it actually smells really sheepy which isn't a bad thing I love it love wool that smells like sheep but some people don't but that's always what I related non super wash yarn to be scratchy and smelly like sheep well I've come across this yarn and this is local to me outlaw yarn um, is here in Christchurch and they've got this range called rebel light rebel destiny yeah rebel destiny light it's a four ply it's a non super wash dyed yarn it feels soft to the skin um, they had some samples knitted up in the shop and it it doesn't feel scratchy at all but it has I'll show you it's got that toothy rustic kind of feel to it and I know that's for tr traditional color work is often what they recommend because it's grippy and it's the floats sit well and it's it's really um, it's really what we should be doing a lot of our color work like traditional color work in now I've got these five colors that I bought okay and you can see they haven't got that shine drapey um, sleekness that a super wash yarn has has but they're five colors that I've got there now I bought six skeins of those two so they're sort of my the main colors I've got and then I've got these couple of contrast colors that's what I've got <laughs> um, and I'm quite excited about this because I like I said I haven't really done what I would call traditional color work using this type of yarn um, and I'm quite excited about using that and I thought this would be a really good pattern to do it in um, a pattern that's complete color work not just a color work yoke um, yeah so um, yeah uh, let me know your thoughts on that um, yeah non superwash versus superwash like I said I'm not an expert in the two but I do understand that people do say for traditional color work non superwash is the way to go but regardless of what yarn you want to use it looks like a really nice pattern eh? yeah just stranded color work it's top down um, done in the rounds circular 
it's a paid for pattern and I've got the links below oh that's what I wanted to mention too so this yarn is da, 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 I'm not sure I'm not sure how many grams but it's 193 meters per skein and it's $12 um, so I think that's quite affordable it's 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 in that range of affordable um, affordable yarns I think it is yeah so 12 12 dollars for 190 oh, 50 grams there we go 50 grams for 12 dollars and that's 193 meters um, so I'll put the link to that um, I did see them on a podcast recently and I think they're getting quite low in stock and and quite low in some of the colors but hey it's one of those things just keep going on and until they've got the stock and yeah I'm sure they'll they'll be um, getting stock in gradually as time goes on um, now the next pattern is a pattern that we have talked about Ember <laughs> da, da, da. now this is where things get really tricky and I start to get really confused because that yarn that I just showed you I could do in this pattern as well but I have bought the yarn for this pattern so it's great isn't it it's quite a boxy cropped long sleeved I think another one you can do long sleeve or short sleeved and it's by Yuko Yuko Shimizu I shouldn't even try that because I'm sure I've pronounced that wrong yeah but the links on the notes below get sick of me saying that I'm sure you do so I've got the yarn for it so in my stash I already had this white uh, silver and blue it's by yarn therapy what I did buy I jumped online and bought three or four skeins of this color now oh my god Look how beautiful that is it's real autumn rusty everything about this color I love it's just got all different shades of orange rust Wow yeah I'm really happy with it <laughs> um, so I bought that for the main color and then my contrast colors will be the silver and the blue so see so that's by yarn therapy the link below we have talked about that in previous podcasts it's also um, the supplier that does the yarny balm which I featured a couple of episodes ago and a lot of you got back to me and said I'm buying it I love it I love the sound of it um, so if you have gone online and bought this balm I, I hope you're happy with it <laughs> I hope it hasn't disappointed you for those that are new and haven't seen the previous podcast it's a hand moisturizing cream it's really rich and nourishing but it's wool friendly so you can put it on and then continue knitting um, and it won't stain your wool or it won't destroy your wool at all um, so I won't go on about that because I have gone about on about it in previous um, episodes but it's the same supplier um, yarn therapy that I've got that yarn for so that's embers and I really want to cast this on but as you can see I haven't even wound my balls yet so I'm quite away <laughs> from probably casting it on but um, it's there and it's it's in my list of things to do also in the previous podcast I've talked about this number by Andrea Mowry stripes I really want to cast this one on and I showed you some yarn from my stash and it's outlaw yarn and I just I apologize for the wrinkle sorry wrinkle alert um, so see all those colors there I've had those in my stash and they're what I'm going to use to do this stripes but I had the reason I wanted to mention it again is because I had I, I have had a couple of questions about what yarn that is that I had in my stash and it was actually um, it was Bohemia Sport but what I think Outlaw have done is they've rebranded Bohemia Sport and they now call it Bohemia Light. But it's also the same gauge and interchangeable with their Little Bandit, which is a sports weight yarn as well. So, in a nutshell, Bohemia Sport, Bohemia Light or Little Bandit, 
can all be used to do that stripes there um, and Outlaw Yarn are doing a knit along in October um, and that's probably why I've had a couple of questions about it because I think there might be some people out there that want to do this as part of the um, October knit along um, but yeah that's the yarn that I would recommend is the Bohemia Sports or the Little Bandit um, and it's a really nice color range they you could pretty well get in that range every color that she's got in that jersey It'd be lovely It'd be really lovely um, so yeah that's another one in my long list of things that I want to cast on <laughs> okay excuse me I did say I had a lot to cover today so I hope if you haven't got time to sit down and watch it all that you pause it and come back um, and and catch up on it later so but if you're in for the long haul thank you <laughs> thank you for hanging in there the next thing I wanted to talk about and I'm, I'm nearly at the end but this really deserved um, I thought it really deserved me to mention so here in Christchurch, and I'm sure in most cities, you probably have a spinners, weavers, um, uh, fibre group. Um, in Christchurch, they're called, um, I think they're just called Wool Yarn Fibre Guild. But they have a shop and it's situated in the Tannery, which is a shopping centre here in Christchurch. It's only about less than 10 minute drive out of our CBD. And what they do there is they spin their yarn, they dye their yarn, they spin it, then they sell some of it in a shop. Now to sell their yarn in a shop, it's got to go through quite a few sets of eyes before it's approved to be sold in the shop. So they have a really high um, standard of what they will sell in their store. So you're not buying somebody's experiments, right? Because I've, I'm a spinner myself, or I used to be when I had time, and not all spinning is the same, right? You can, you can get some really um, obscure um, plies and that when you start spinning. But for, anyway, my point is to sell in the shop, they have a really high standard. Now, I come across these, I've seen them a couple of times, but I thought, no, I've got to go back and buy them and I have to talk about them. So a lot of patterns now, especially Andrea Mary patterns, they call for a yarn called Spin Cycle. And Spin Cycle is a mulled, you probably know it, multicoloured yarn. It's a commercially dyed and spun yarn. Um, I know here in New Zealand, I can only get it from Auckland. Um, I can't buy it anywhere in the South Island. I have to buy it online. Um, so it's not easy to get here in Christchurch, uh, sorry, in New Zealand. It isn't a cheap yarn um, and it's commercial. Um, but some of the ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure there's gentlemen out there, out at the um, Weavers and Spinners Guild, they've been producing stuff like this. Now, serious, this is seriously beautiful yarn. That it was hand dyed when it was in a slither and then it has been hand spun and plied. Now that to me is as good as, if not better, than anything that you'll get commercially made um, from Spin Cycle. Um, it's not cheap. It's probably about the same price point as Spin Cycle. This one that I've got in my hand is 70% Merino and 30% Silk. And there's about 370 meters there but that is seriously beautiful this next one um, is also 70% wool 30% silk and there's 400 meters on this one and look at the colors on that Wow so I am going to knit this into one of those Andrew, Andrea Maori designs um, where it calls for that um, variegated spin cycle yarn now you can't buy it online um i think the reason why i wanted to put it out there is because in this new world that we live in a lot of people are holidaying within new zealand um so if you are a knitter and you're traveling around the south island i know myself when i travel it's always okay where are we going 
where are the best yarn shops i love to go to a new yarn shop in a new area so i wanted to put it out there that if you are from christchurch and you haven't been out there you really need to but if you're traveling from out of town and you come into christchurch it's worth looking them up um, the tannery on its own is a really boutique type shopping centre. They have a, um, a, a bar there where they sell craft beers. They have a nice coffee shop. It's really quite boutique -y. Um, But if you're a knitter, it's well worth a trip out there. And this is the sort of thing that you can buy out there. So, like I said, it's one ofs. Um, you may not get four skeins the same. Um, you know, it's 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 luck of the draw, what, what's out there at the time. But they always have a lot of yarn. They always have a good selection. And um, so you, you need to put that on your places to go list when you come and visit Christchurch. Yeah, that's really beautiful stuff. Um, and I think I'm nearly coming to the end. <laughs> I think I've just about covered everything. Um, once again, I really want to thank everybody that has subscribed to my channel. It... Um, not really sure how the whole YouTube thing works, but I know for my channel to get viewed at and looked at, it is based on how many subscribers that I have um, as to how popular my channel will be. And, um, and of course, I want it to be popular. I do, a lot of people, a lot of my friends have said to me, why are you doing it? <laughs> why, why do you want to put yourself out there like that? Like, it's pretty risky, right? Um, so I thought I'd just touch really quickly on, and I'll answer that question as to why I want to do it. So I am involved in a couple of local knit groups um, where we go to libraries and coffee shops and we meet. Last year, I injured myself um, and I had quite a nasty injury and I was housebound um, pretty well for probably just over four months. I was on a lot of really strong pain relief. Um, so I was you know, a little bit out of it some of the time. I couldn't drive. Um, for quite a while there, I couldn't sit for long periods of time. It was a back injury with a compressed nerve. Um, it was pretty nasty. So I couldn't really get to my knit groups. Um, I had a couple of um, really dear friends that would come to me once a week and sit here and knit with me at home. Um, but you, I did feel quite isolated and excluded um, through that time. Knitting seriously kept me sane. I did a lot of knitting and, and I think that's when I really took knitting on to the point of it where it's almost a, an obsession. But I come across knitting at YouTube channels um, and a lot of them were Canadian, um, European, the Grocery Girls, Knitting Traditions, The Gentle Knitter. There's quite a few out there and they're super, super popular. Um, and I'd sit there for hours with my cup of tea, one eye on the computer, one eye on my knitting. They'd talk about patterns and yarn and that's what I'm doing with you right now. Sometimes I'd put it on pause, I'd jump over to Ravelry and I'd search the pattern and I'd add that to my favourites list and then I'd go back to watching them. And, and I learnt a lot. I learnt a lot about wool and patterns and, and, and all sorts of stuff. But it also kept, it kept me engaged um, and it filled quite a few hours of my days where I and I loved it I, I I almost felt like I was in a knit group from home um and that's what it meant to me and I thought there wasn't a lot coming out of New Zealand that was completely independent um and, and that's why I wanted to do it I thought I've got a lot to talk about I am really good at talking about knitting and I love knitting and I love patterns and I mean lockdown has forced us to be at home quite a lot but there are other circumstances where people can be quite isolated um, and I don't want to use the word lonely because I was never really lonely but you do feel quite isolated and excluded um, when you're in that situation so knitting um, channels meant a lot to me they were really important and and so I suppose that's why I'm doing it because I thought if I can be part of somebody's day if they're sitting at home on their own knitting um that really means a lot to me so 
you viewers mean a lot to me um, subscribe to my channel um, give me your feedback leave comments I read all the comments and I reply to all of them um, it means a lot so um, yeah I think that's all don't forget to subscribe you can follow me on YouTube and Ravelry my Ravelry isn't really up to date but I will work on that um, and I'll try to get that more up to date um, but it's Lisa NZ Knitter um, and I think I've just about covered everything uh, once again thank you very much stay safe stay happy and happy knitting everyone and I'll see you in a couple of weeks Thank you. Bye.